there are four major types of tissue uh, that we'll be looking at in uh, chapter 33 of our textbook. Uh, the first one is epithelial tissue, and I'll get into more detail of that in just a little bit, but you can see epithelial tissue uh, is a, a surface tissue at uh, internal and external surfaces. Uh, we will talk a little bit about connective tissues as well, and there are many different types of connective tissues. Uh, we will look at the different kinds of muscle, and you can see there are three different kinds of muscle uh, tissue on the screen uh, before us. And uh, last but not least will be nervous tissue. Uh, this is one that we won't focus a whole lot on in, in chapter 33, but we'll go into great detail on as we talk about specific uh, structures and functions of the nervous system. Uh, we'll start out first with the epithelial tissues. So a little bit of a summary of what epithelial tissues are. Uh, first of all, epithelial tissues are um, uh, cells that uh, are facing a free surface. Uh, they are uh, anchored down by connective tissues, but uh, this, the surface of the cells are then to some sort of a free surface. Uh, and uh, they are free to the environment. They are uh, exposed to either fluids or air. Uh, and a couple of examples we'll try to show you here in just a second. Uh, so these cells right now are, are facing down on some sort of a connective tissue, but these cells, these parts of the cells up here are free uh, and they are not touching any other cells. And so if uh, I, I wanted to, I could take uh, those, that, that uh, structure and that uh, green, we'll try to get something going here, that green area could turn into more of a circle. We could kind of fold it up like this, we could fold it up like that, and we get these square cells then lining the internal sides of this tube. And so this is free in the middle of that. It would be a free surface. This could be lining the digestive tract or, or your esophagus or, or something along those lines. And so we'd have a, a cell facing a free surface. Um, and that would uh, be a definition of an epithelial cell. And you can see, I uh, already have up on the screen, it is possible to have a single layer of these cells, but it is also possible to stack them up on top of each other, uh, getting multiple layers. Uh, in addition to that, you could take it one step further and have different kinds of epithelial cells stacked on top of each other. Uh, when we go back to the previous screen, uh, we'll see uh, that the, the different shapes here versus here do have some meaning when it comes to uh, epithelial cells. Uh, so the two different types of epithelium uh, are simple epithelial cells, which uh, consist of a single layer of cells. Uh, the, other, uh, the other kind is uh, what's called stratified. You think about rock strata are layers of rock, uh, and so stratified epithelial cells are when there are two or more layers of cells. Uh, you can see some of the functions associated with this. Uh, over on the right hand side here we've got the three different types of epithelial cells and they're showing examples in all three cases of uh, simple epithelial cells. There's simple squamous cells, a single layer that tend to be flatter in nature. And you can see over here with some common locations blood vessels um, have blood running through them and so that's a free surface. Uh, they're flat thin cells uh, that then would line those blood vessels. Uh, the air sacs of the lungs, the alveoli, are also lined with these simple squamous cells. Uh, the thin cells make it good for diffusion, very easy to diffuse across those thin, uh, thin layer of cells. Uh, the next one, simple cuboidal. Uh, the simple cuboidal cells look like small little cubes. Again, they are a single layer if they are simple. Uh, sometimes they will have little microvilli on them, like we saw uh, in the digestive system. Uh, and you can see here then it says common places would be places like lining the gut. Uh, also parts of the respiratory tract could be uh, lined with simple cuboidal cells. These uh, function not just in uh, diffusion, but are more along the lines of uh, secretion, uh, if you're going to secrete enzymes or hormones, uh, and absorption, again, in the digestive tract to absorb those uh, uh, nutrients into the bloodstream. Uh, so not so much diffusion, because they're not quite as thin, but those other two uh, two possibilities. And then a simple columnar, columnar uh, meaning column-like, and so they're a little bit taller cubes. Uh, again, single layer if it's simple, uh, and they can also have microvilli on them, so you're going to see them in the exact same parts uh, as the simple cuboidal. They're just going to be thicker, taller cells, uh, 
lining the gut and lining the respiratory tract good for secretion and absorption. Now any of these simple cells could also be uh, layered upon layer, uh, two or more layers, and become uh, stratified. And oftentimes layered ones are more in, in terms of protection uh, so that if one layer is damaged or goes away there are layers below it that can be uh, can be uh, there to take over the role. We would see that in, in skin cells. Uh, some of these epithelial cells uh, are very specific in terms of their function and could be called glandular cells. Uh, we have talked a little bit, and I'll scroll down to this right away, we've talked a little bit already this year about the endocrine system and so we said that uh, those endocrine glands can secrete hormones and oftentimes they secrete those hormones right into the bloodstream so uh, secreting into one of those open surfaces like blood vessels but there are also exocrine glands and we know from some of our previous stuff that exo means to the outside so exocrine glands are going to be secreting to the outside of the body you can see a couple examples over here on this on the uh, side of the slide uh, here are, are some cells in a nice single layer exposed to an open surface, in this case a gland that's tucked in what looks like under the skin, but you can see the opening is all the way down to the single layer of cells, whether it be mucus, poison, uh, or any other type of gland, it has to open to some sort of open surface, and if it's exocrine, it's going to be uh, to the outside of the body. Uh, our salivary glands in our mouth, even though our mouth feels like it's inside our body, it's really just uh, an open surface that is to the outside. Uh, earwax in our ears, uh, mammary glands in females would be uh, producing milk, uh, oil on our, on our surface of our skin instead of mucus or, or poison, we could have some oil uh, pores, uh, and then a lot of our digestive enzymes are sent out into our digestive tract, which is really just a tube running through our body as we talked about before in class <clears throat> you know you can just swallow a quarter and it'll go right through you because it's just a tube basically passing right through our body and those digestive enzymes are being secreted to the outside uh, of our body into that free surface the lumen of our intestines or our stomach or so forth uh, fun slide. Thought it might be nice to uh, put a fun slide into one of these uh, vodcasts, but uh, I didn't know if you heard. Uh, Easter has been canceled. It's a little ways off now, but Easter has been canceled, and here's why. Uh, this dog uh, got the Easter bunny. And you can see this picture was taken just a little while ago with so much snow still on the ground. Second type of uh, tissue that we're going to talk about in, in this section is connective tissue. As it says, connective tissue is going to be oftentimes connecting things together. There are two major types of connective tissue. Uh, some connective tissues are considered to be soft connective tissue. Uh, some of them are, are loose connective tissues. A lot of different fibers underneath the skin helping to uh, connect uh, the, the, the layers of skin cells to the body um, are considered some of these loose fibers. You also have some dense, irregular connective tissues. They're not quite as stretchy. They're oftentimes in different parts of the body there to help support um, our, our tissue, other tissues and help keep them in place. Uh, and then you have dense, regular uh, connective tissue. These are a little stretchier. Uh, our tendons and ligaments are made out of this type of connective tissue. Uh, and as we get into some lab on Monday, you're going to start to look at a couple of these different types of uh, connective tissues, uh, recognize them for some of their uh, regular and irregular patterns. Uh, and in this picture you can just see some different types of uh, tissues underlying the skin uh, including some uh, fibrous tissues uh, that could be some of those soft connective tissues. Also put into the connective tissue category are some specialized connective tissues. Uh, one that you might be familiar with is cartilage. Cartilage is found in a couple different places of our body including uh, the tip of our nose, our, our ears have some cartilage, we have some cartilage in our rib cage. Uh, but uh, other times it's uh, used to help cushion and support uh, uh, places in, in between our bones and our joints, we have some cartilage as well. Uh, one of the things that people don't oftentimes recognize <coughs> excuse me, is that uh, the, the bones in our body were not the first things to give us our, our, our shape. We were actually, while in utero, inside mom, we were a, a cartilage skeleton that over time uh, the cartilage was replaced with bone 
and uh, now we have the the bone we've got today but not every every single piece of it was uh, turned to bone and and we've got some of that cartilage left behind of that initial uh, that initial skeleton that was made out of cartilage uh, bone itself is considered to be a specialized connective tissue coming from that initial template of cartilage uh, and as we look into uh, the bone tissue in lab on Monday uh, hopefully you'll be able to see a, a little bit of the differences between some of the, the spongy bone uh, versus compact bone. Uh, adipose tissue, mostly uh, what is considered to be the fat tissue, the, the cells that fill up with those, uh, those, those lipids that uh, we consider to be fat. Uh, we will look at some of those tissues uh, as well in lab. And uh, blood itself is considered to be a connective tissue. Uh, probably one of the main reasons is because uh, the blood cells uh, are, are initially uh, produced in the bone marrow and so it's a, a derivative of another type of connective tissue, specialized connective tissue, so I believe that's why it gets put into that location. And Here we got a little picture of a, of a bone uh, and you can see there is uh, some spongy tissue with uh, more spaces in between down here whereas down along the edges you get some more of that more tightly packed uh, compact bone uh, tissue. Another fun slide for you. This will be the last one, just to keep our time uh, within check. It says here, well tell me Randy, has someone eaten all the refrigerator magnets again? And uh, obviously, haha, -ha, the dog is stuck to the refrigerator. Last one we'll go through in terms of tissues uh, tonight. Uh, muscle tissue is going to be uh, another biggie that we're going to try to recognize the differences between the different types of muscle tissue. A uh, one you should be familiar with, uh, the ones that people try to work out and get stronger muscles, uh, are the skeletal muscles. We'll get all this up here with a picture. Uh, skeletal muscles are attached to bones, uh, and another type of connective tissue attaches it to the bones. We'll see if you know uh, what connective tissue that is. Is it tendon or ligament? We'll make sure you know that uh, in, in some class stuff. Uh, attached to bones, striated means striped, and, and right along here you can kind of see the striping uh, quite well. This to be striated means to be striped. And a uh, skeletal muscle is voluntary, which means uh, you have control over it. You can decide when to contract those muscles. And by the end of this unit, we will discuss how exactly those muscles get the message uh, to contract. Another type of muscle is smooth muscle. Uh, smooth muscle, you can kind of see the, the wavier, kind of smooth shape to it, not the striping and striations. Uh, as the skeletal muscle has. Uh, but smooth muscle is found mostly uh, in our internal organs. We've got a lot of smooth muscle. It is involuntary. We don't have to think about doing that. Uh, our stomach, as it churns and, and, and churns up all the food, uh, is involuntarily uh, moving. We don't have to think about moving that muscle. And last but not least is cardiac muscle. When you hear the word cardiac, uh, you should be thinking heart, and cardiac muscle is the muscle of the heart. It is also involuntary. Uh, and it does have some striation to it. You, you can see some striping, but you do look for these special end junctions. I, I believe they're called uh, interplated discs, uh, and you'll, you'll look for those in a couple of different spots uh, along the, the, uh, the muscle cells. And what they do is they allow uh, the muscle cells of the heart to uh, be all connected together, uh, and get the message, the electrical signal all at the same time, uh, to contract. So they contract in unison uh, and, and have that heart pumping mentality. And so those special end junctions, those discs that connect them together are, are the key to that. And so when looking under a scope, you would look for some of that uh, in identifying cardiac muscle. I'm not going to talk about uh, the nervous tissue. I mentioned that before, uh, but it is the fourth major type of tissue of the body. We'll focus in on the details of that uh, with the uh, the days to come in lecture. Uh, obviously these tissue types all get put together. These different cells make up different tissues and those tissues get put together into the organs. We have several different organ systems. 